When we came there, it was a little house. He lived on a big field. He was, um, we called him a gardener, like he had a lot of strawberries growing. And he had, the house was all isolated, like just his little house was standing there and the barn. And it was so beautiful there. It was so peaceful. And I figured, gee, it's, I think like that still exists after all that, that tumult. And we went there, all we wanted is to cover ourselves, to hide. So we were sitting and he used to bring me papers and pencil. He used to say, write down what you feel. I used to write little poems. I still have in Polish, of course. He used to have all kinds of friends that came to visit him. And every time he spoke, he saw somebody coming. So he sort of started to talk loud, so we should be aware that somebody's there and we shouldn't. Oh, and one, one day I remember uh, people came into the barn. I don't know who they were or his friends or somebody. They did something. He had some kind of machine to cut that, the, those weeds. And they used to talk and all of a sudden I wanted to cough. Something got stuck in my throat. And I had a pillow or something and I covered my mouth. My eyes popped out, you know, and somehow I didn't suffocate, I didn't make a sound. That was horrible. We couldn't even, you know, we, we just whispered all the time. Yeah, with a few of those, of those things. One day my husband said, he's so sick, he can't get up. He can't move. So we started to shake him, come, you have to. He said, no, I can't move. So that dentist, he was such a tough guy. He had that pail of water that we had, and he just poured it right on his head. And he got up so fast and punched him in the nose. He said, what the hell did you do that for? See, it was sort of funny. But he got up somehow, you see.